Hey everybody, so welcome back to The Secret Place. I'm here in a little bit of a new location. I mean, we don't have many spots in our uh, little apartment here, so I'm trying to think of different, to give you different scenery. And I'm in Madison and Taylor's room, so they have a couple cool things that hang on their walls. Oh, let's get that socket over there out of the way. Okay, we'll have more of our coffee and donut pictures are, um, coffee shop inspiration. We'll keep that in the background. Oh, side note, just thought of this right now. Something um, that is just really helpful if you have a dream or if you are just um, even desire to have anything in your life, visualize it and put up a picture, put up words, um, whatever it is that's going to inspire you in areas where you are all the time, you know, in the bathroom, in the car, your bedroom, your work office. I use the tape little things onto my computer. Um, and that way you can see it all the time. And studies have shown that those people who constantly visualize um, their, their dreams, their desires, they attain it because I think it's because you never lose that focus. It's always there. And so it really inspires you to just, even if it's the smallest step, even if you want to do something like lose weight, it helps you to really um, to do the small steps that will eventually lead to that. So anyway, this picture of the coffee and donuts just made me think about that since we want to have a coffee shop. But what I'm most excited about right now is the new tab. I hope everyone likes the new look of our blog. Um, thank you, Lindsay Pleviak, for the amazing photo shoot that you did for us. Um, we wanted to add a few new tabs, and you're going to get to hear them from Madison and Taylor. Um, when they roll out the dreams and vision tab and I am here rolling out the poetry tab because I'm a writer and I have been holding on to a ton of different writings um, a lot of poetry over years and so God has said it is time to start revealing some of your work so um, the first poem that I have up here is called a conversation with dirt yes dirt um, I, I it's only God who gives me these ideas. Um, and, you know, I truly know when to write and when it's of the Holy Spirit. And everything that I'm posting that I will post here um, is what I know to be of the Holy Spirit. Um, and so this poem here is just, it's about a conversation with dirt because God had me think about dirt in the sense of being one of his most humble creations. Because dirt, it just sits on the ground, but it's responsible, if you think about it, for so much. I mean, think about plants. They have to be planted in dirt, and you don't get the, the beauty. You don't get the, the fruit off trees. We don't get oxygen from trees, okay, if it wasn't for the dirt that they were planted in. And that is really what he had me talk about, and that's often overlooked. And that really goes hand in hand with the whole staying behind the closed door verse. And I'm going to do a separate, um, a separate video on that because that has been a theme. I have actually, um, I think I made that my, my life reverse last year. I decided that because I don't think there's anything more important than that, that concept of staying behind the closed door. It doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter what other people see. It matters what's happening between you and God. And that is it. Because at the right time, his time, not your time, his time, he will bring you out of that closed door. And that's really um, goes hand in hand with this concept of the dirt. You know, sometimes you're going to be in a position, and I have many times before, and a lot of times, a lot of days still feel that, you know, when you're pursuing a dream or you have a goal and you're not there yet in your mind, what you think that's going to be like, and you're doing the day-to-day -day, like gut work of it you will feel like the dirt just on the ground, you know, trampled. Some days you're going to feel like you're trampled on. Some days you're going to feel like a mess, you know, all these things about dirt. But the thing is, that is what yields that fruit that hangs in the tree. If we can be patient enough to wait for that and if we can trust in God to, to have that waiting for us so much so that we don't rush ahead out of his timing and try to, grab and take hold of those dreams uh, for ourself because that's when we really get ourselves into trouble if we're not patient and if we don't wait for God to do it for us. 
So I hope you enjoy Conversation with Dirt. It really hits on the topic of pride since dirt I equate to being humble. And, you know, God really revealed that there are the two biggest ways that Satan can get to us is through pride, which the Bible actually does talk about is one of the worst sins. And I think it's because when we're prideful, the main reason is it just it's a separation from God. Pride is relying on ourself. And when we're relying on ourselves, we're not relying on God. We're not trusting in him. We're we're trust we're putting all the weight on our own shoulders. And I've done it a million times. He's really speaking to me about this. And to just let him do things, let him take hold of your life. And you know, he he spoke to me the other day. He said, you know, a lot of think that humil a lot of people think that humility is the opposite of pride. But really the opposite of pride is obedience. And this was huge. I was like, whoa, oh my gosh, God, okay. Because think about it. Pride is just completely and utterly relying on yourself. Obedience is not only hearing the voice of God, which we talk about a lot, how important that is, but then you actually have to do what he says. And I'm going to tell you that is when you start dying to yourself, what it talks about in the Bible. Those who want to gain life must lose theirs and you die to self. And when you really find yourself in that place, that relationship with God, with Jesus, when you trust him enough to actually then do what you hear him saying, okay, to actually go through and do it, you are going to be dying to yourself because most of the time I would say it doesn't make sense and you can't really understand why he would ask you to do something, but you will if you do it. That's the thing. If you can put your pride aside and say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you like a good father because you're good and you're like a, a, a father who takes care of your child and you have our best interest in mind, then I'm going to trust you and I'm going to do it. And so that obedience is really the opposite of pride because that's complete surrender of yourself. So this poem looks at, it doesn't really talk about obedience because that's a new revelation God gave me. And I wrote this uh, probably two years ago, a year or two ago. Um, but this really talks about the two biggest evils being pride and too much pride and too little of understanding because that's the other way that um that's the other way evil creeps in and that separation from god happens is when we do not choose to understand come from a, a posture of understanding another person or another situation when we get caught up in our own ways and we think that's the only way life is and most problems come from a lack of willingness to understand you don't have to agree with people. You don't have, you're not going to know their situations because we don't know what we don't experience. But you have to try to understand. And so here is a conversation with dirt.